Hey guys, Zach you back here. In today's video, I will be teaching you how to make a trap in a forest in Roblox Studio that falls down on the player when triggered. So first, I'm going to delete this grass effect because I don't really like it. There you go. Now let's create the model for our trap. In this example, I will make a cage type trap in the forest that triggers when you step on a platform. Let's add a part representing a tree for now. And also, I'm going to add a dummy for reference. And let's call the part tree. Next, let's add a platform on our tree. Something like this. You'll understand what it's for later. Don't forget to name it. I'm going to call it Stopper. And let's create the trap itself. I'm thinking a semi-sphere with a hole in it for the person. Now what we're going to do is get a part. And we're going to make it the size of exactly half of this sphere. This is good. And now let's negate the part. And let's combine the two. Let's resize it. Okay, now we can union the two parts. There you go. This is our semi-sphere. Let's scale it a little. And let's do control D for duplicate. And resize the duplicate to make it a little smaller. Now let's negate the duplicate and union the two parts. Now we have ourselves a trap. Let's put the trap on top of the stopper. Let's scale the stopper a little. And now we're going to rename it to Trap. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make a part called a Trigger, which will activate the trap once you step on it. This should be good. And don't forget to name the Trigger. Now, let's make a group for all of our parts using Control G. And we're going to rename the group to Forest Trap. Also, we can delete the dummy. Now, anchor the tree in the stopper. Let's get ready to do some scripting. Add a script into your group. By the way, the reason we are putting the script inside the forest trap group is because it will be interacting with multiple parts of the forest trap. Change the name to trigger script. Delete the default code. And let's start off with a few variables.
Next, we're going to make a function for the touch event that will trigger the trap. Inside, we're going to put a line of code defining the humanoid. Now inside this function, we'll make an if then statement to make sure that whatever touched the trigger was in fact a humanoid and to trigger the event. And inside this, we'll write What this does is basically make the stopper invisible and not able to collide with other objects, so it basically disappears, allowing our forest trap to fall down. And now we're going to call the function. Now let's test it out. As you can see, the forest trap does fall down on us, and we can't get out of it. What we are going to do next is make a loop so that the trap resets every time after you trigger it. Basically how this works is we're going to make the original trap invisible and clone new traps every time there is a reset. So what we are going to do is go to our terrain, and we're going to make the trap transparent. Also, we're going to set the can collide to false. And we're going to anchor it. Now, go back to the scripts, and we're going to add a variable. This is for the current base. Also, let's add Debris service is basically a Roblox Studio service that removes a part after a certain amount of time, in our case, the trap. So basically, after a certain amount of seconds that we can choose, the trap is going to disappear from the Earth. Now let's make a new function. And we're going to call it set trap. Inside, we're going to write... This will make an exact clone of our trap. Next, we're going to write These variables just take the trap to its original form. Next, we're going to add which makes the stopper invisible again when it resets. Now, this part is going to be co pretty complicated. We're going to write this. This will reset the trap once the trap is destroyed. And let's write... Also, go back to this part and write can trigger equals false. And also, in the same part, we're going to add this. This lets the game know that our cur trap right here should be destroyed in 10 seconds. And finally, let's call the function. I forgot to add a parenthesis here. Now we're ready to test it out. For some reason it isn't working, but I think I know why. It's because I forgot to write curdtrap.transparency equals zero. Now everything should work. There you go. And after 10 seconds, the trap should disappear.
And as you can see, the trap also reset. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.